I will set you on high. Why? Why? Why are you set on high? Yeah, God said, I will set you. Psalm 91 14. I'll set you on high because you know my name. And Jesus said in the book of Hebrews, I will declare your name. Father, I'll declare your name to my brother. <laughs> you know why I know his, why his name is Jesus? Because this Holy Ghost told me so. Jesus is the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Uh, we'll just talk about God. Did you know uh, the Bible says God is invisible? Anybody know that? Yes. Do you know how many times the Bible says God is invisible? Four times. <laughs> and there's other scriptures that kind of lean that way. But let, 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 we'll just start at Romans 1 20. That's a good place to start. Praise God. I think maybe we ought to back up uh, to verse 18. Let's back up to 17. <laughs> Praise God. Romans 1 17 said, For in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. Hallelujah. You know your faith can increase? Praise God. Yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. I, I, I believe the Lord's working on me to increase my faith. Yeah. yeah, praise God. I love God. I love this message. Praise God. Now, where was I? The righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith, as it is written. The just shall live by faith. For the wrath of God. Now, we're talking about the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. And then verse 19, now this really hit me this morning, you see. Because what may be known of God, he's invisible. We'll find that in the next verse. But it says, what may be known of God is manifest in him or revealed to him, for God has shown it to men. God has shown, shown us something. I know he showed me something, praise God. For since the creation of the world, his what? Invisible attributes. He is in. Romans 1 20. Okay. His invisible attributes are clearly seen. Oh, you can see what's invisible? <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. By the eye of faith, I can see what's invisible. Amen. I can see the Holy Ghost working in my life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. So his invisible attributes are clearly seen. Being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they were without, without excuse. You know why I believe in the oneness of God? One reason is, yeah, and the Bible says God created man in his own image. Now I look down there and it says his eternal power and his Godhead. It's understood by something you can see. What can I see? A man. <laughs> Creating the image of God. Yes. I look in the mirror <laughs> and I say, I see God. <laughs> I see what he created. Yes. Praise God. He's invisible, but there's something about him can uh, can make him himself known. Praise God. Oh, I love this. I love this. Yeah, that's how I, uh, how 
how to learn about the oneness of God. He created Adam in his own image. So I look at Adam and I get a picture of what God looks like in my mind, you know. Praise the Lord. You can't see God, but you can see something that represents God. Right. Jesus uh, told those Jews in John 8, he said, uh, uh, it's written in you the law, he's talking to them Jews and Israelites, it's written in your law that the law, that the testimony of two men is true. That's in the law, Moses. Testimony of two men is true. He said, I'm one that bears witness of myself, and my father that's with me bears witness of it. He said, That's true. Yes. And you know what them Jews said? <laughs> they couldn't see God because he's invisible. So they said, Where is your father? They couldn't see him. But the Bible says in Hebrews 11, that Moses endured the things that he endured because he could see what was invisible. Yeah. As seeing, you know, how do you see it? By the things that are made. Praise God. Let's go to uh, Colossians 1 15. I love this. I heard Brother Kenneth Lee's expound on this, and it was wonderful. 115. Praise God. Praise God. Let's start in verse 13. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of His love. Now, here's one reason, another reason that I believe in God. Because when I read that scripture several years ago, some little voice inside me revealed what that meant. I, it, if it got revealed to me, who did it? The Holy Ghost. Yeah. See, when I read that, he has delivered us from um, the power of darkness. The Lord, the Lord spoke to me. I believe it did. Because something inside me spoke to me. I, that invisible voice yeah. spoke to me. He said, what delivered my people out of Egypt? I said, the blood you put on the doorpost. He said, that's right. But now look at this. He can make it. Oh, the old King James says he translated this into the kingdom of God's Son. He said, What put my people, what put my people into the kingdom of God? What did I tell Nicodemus? But, yeah, but, see, the, the, the blood had the, the blood had already done its function by bringing you out of, of sin. But it, it takes, if you want to get the kingdom of God, you, you get baptized in Jesus' name, baptized with the Holy Ghost, that puts you in. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. <laughs> that makes you a joint heir. You know, everybody don't know this. Most people are just leave in redemption. They think they're born again or not. <laughs> Praise God. Anyway, let's go a little farther here because I want to see about God being invisible. Verse 14 says, We have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sin. And verse 15 said, He is the image of the invisible God. You know what that says to me? When you see Jesus, you see the invisible. Praise God. When you see Jesus, I haven't literally seen Jesus in the flesh. But that, that little voice I told you about that spoke to me about the blood and the water and the spirit, where did that come from? That's the invisible Holy Spirit of God revealing things to me. Hallelujah! Hallelujah, Jesus. 
<laughs> I got the best thing in the world. Do you hear me say that? <laughs> I get the best thing in the world. Praise God. And it's going to get better. <laughs> the best is yet to come. <laughs> Praise the Lord. He's the image. He's what you can see and what you cannot see. He's the image of the invisible. So he's the image of what he's what you can see and what you cannot see. He's invisible. Him, the image of the invisible God. He's the firstborn over all creation. You know what that means? He was born before everything was anything was created. He had to be brought forth before anything could be created. Uh, so he's uh, He's the image of the invisible. He's the first one of all creation. For it tells you why he's the first one of all creation. For by him, all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth. Visible and invisible. There's things you can see, there's things you can't see. I can't see electricity, but <laughs> occasionally I felt it. <laughs> yeah, praise God. Whether the stones and dominions or principalities of power, all things were created through him and for him. That makes me think of Revelation, I think it's chapter 5. It said, God created all things for his own pleasure. And you know, if he created all things and he created me, then he created me for his pleasure. Hallelujah! Oh, Father, I go with this, the better I like it. <laughs> Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise God. 17. He is before all things, and in him all things consist. He holds everything together. That's not Colossians. Well, we we uh, covered two invisible scriptures about God. Let's go to 1 Timothy 1.17. Praise God. First Timothy, chapter one. Praise God. Verse seventeen. Now to the King eternal, immortal. What's the next word? Invisible. Invisible. Now to the king eternal, immortal, the king's immortal, the king's invisible, to God alone, God who alone is wise, to honor and glory forever, amen. Now, let's jump over to chapter 3, verse, I think it's 16. See, it says the king told him all the invisible. And 3.16. First Timothy. 3.16. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. It is a mystery to those that don't understand. But you know, when you, you, you turn to God, he, he'll help you understand. Praise God. God was manifested or revealed, that means manifested or revealed, in the flesh. <laughs> I don't think anybody had ever seen God except he took a part of himself and he caused that little virgin girl to be pregnant and she had a son which was God's son. It was their son. And so that God dwelt in that son. Jesus said, the Father is in me, that spirit. John 4, 24 says, God is the spirit. So this great eternal invisible spirit took a portion of himself and made it visible in the flesh. Does that make sense to you? Praise God. God just manifested or revealed in the flesh. He was justified in the spirit he was seen by angels. 
He was preached among the Gentiles. I like the way he was seen by angels. <laughs> Praise God. He was believed on in the world. He was received up into glory. Who was received up to glory? The same one that was manifest in the flesh. God went up. <laughs> but he's coming down one of these days. Praise it again. Hebrews 11, 27. I want to show you. Hebrews 11. This is about Moses. Praise God. Let's see. Let's start at verse 24. Hebrews 11, 24. By faith, faith is the what? Substance of things hoped for. When you hope for something, I, I say, I, I believe that God answers prayers of hope sometimes. Maybe not always. You know, Paul prayed three times about a form in the flesh and uh, he had to pray that he got an answer. He's hoping. He is hoping that God would just take that form away, but he didn't. Uh, and, and yet, when, when God spoke to him, he had faith. Until then, until God spoke to him, he just had hope. But God, faith is a substance of hope. Praise God. When God speaks to you, it turns your hope into a substance called faith. Right. Hallelujah. That's why Paul said, most gladly will I rather glory in my infirmities, my infirmities, I'll glory in my infirmities, because when I I do, the power of God comes in my life woo, and does things that uh, only the invisible God can do. <laughs> wow! Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Where was it? Faithful. By faith, Moses, when he became of age, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the passing pleasures of sin. Esteeming the reproach of Christ. Oh, I love this. He esteemed the reproach of Christ. Greater riches than the treasures of Egypt. For he looked to the reward. Is you and I in the reward? <laughs> I like Brother Allen's testimony. His eyes on the reward. <laughs> Praise God. By faith, Moses forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured how? How do you endure? Seeing him who is invisible. Seeing him who is invisible. This invisible God has a way of revealing himself to you. Praise God. He revealed himself to me in more ways than one. The first time is when I got saved. God, something was drawing me to accept Christ. And when I did, something happened inside me, and it's still in the process of happening. Yeah. Praise Lord. God. Praise God. Uh -uh. Don't you love Jesus? Amen. Praise God. He's building my faith. You know, God has worked in my life recently. They took me down that heart hospital in the room by and stuck a thing in me. And I was out for a while. I guess it was. He said it was. <laughs> anyway, here I am. Praise God. Yeah, praise the Lord. Yeah, yes, it's different. It's just different now. Praise God. I, 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 I just got a little closer to God. I want to get close to God. Don't you want to get close to God and just feel like you're like Peter and James and John and just walking the road with him? Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Praise God. Well, I, I, I'm through. 
I wanted to share those four scriptures. It just hit me. The Bible says in the mouth of two or more witnesses, the reward should be established. We have four witnesses here that God is invisible, and yet he loves you. He'll manifest himself to you. One way he manifested himself to me fairly recently is he, he told me in John chapter 3, Anybody know John 3, 16? God so loved the world. Yeah. And, and, and what the Lord told me, see, you know what I'm talking about? I'm talking about Passover. Yeah. God so loved the world. He gave, and the Bible says, uh, I think it's first thing, the sins, I, I, I remember this word, that he is our Passover. He sacrificed for us. So, and the Lord told me, he said, John 3, 16, he's talking about, I'm talking about Passover. In John 3, 5, I'm not talking about Passover, I'm talking about Pentecost. I'm talking about the kingdom of God in John 3, 5. And see, I, I didn't know that until the Lord spoke to me. Like the time I was reading Colossians. And, uh, and, uh, I said, he said, what? Deliver my people. I said, the blood. He said, well, how, how do I tell Nicodemus to get in the kingdom? Hallelujah. See, uh, you know, that's why I, I love this message. Because uh, people, they have an experience with the Lord and they think they're born again. Right. They, and here, let me say this again. I've said this before. John 3 is the only place you find plainly the instructions to get in the kingdom. You find other places where it's referenced about the kingdom of God, but if you want to know how to get in the kingdom of God, read John 3, 5. It tells you how to get in the kingdom of God. The blood does not have anything to do with getting you in the kingdom. The blood is an exit. I like to say it that way. It's an exit. It brings you out. Yes. But after you're out, you can get baptized in one or spirit, and then you're in. Not out. You're in the kingdom. <laughs> Praise God. Well, I said that's true. Anybody have any thoughts? Anybody love this message? God is right. The Bible said a mediator, you don't mediate between, you don't mediate for just one person, but God is one. The Bible says God is one. And I've said this before, but I said, you cannot find the term God the Son in the Bible. You can find the term the Son of God in the he wasn't a secondary God. The God part of Jesus is the only God there is, which is God the Father. Praise God. Let's stand. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I want to worship you. I believe in you. I believe in you. I believe that you these things in the Bible that I've seen about the Godhead and, the, and what you've done and what you are doing, I believe it's a revelation of your spirit. I'm grateful to you. I'm grateful to you, Lord. I want to walk with thee. I want to walk with thee. I want to be close to you, Lord Jesus. I pray this morning, God, that these people that uh, here listening to me, Lord, I pray they'll want stir up that the spirit in him. Like I read just a day or two ago, you stirred the spirit of Cyrus, the king of uh, Babylon, of Persia. You stirred his spirit until, until he wanted to build a temple unto God. You can stir these people, Lord. You can stir somebody, stir their hearts till they want to walk with you, Lord. Oh, God. I love you. Go with us. And thank you for your blessing.
in Jesus' name. Praise God. Amen.